Hello everybody, welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I wanted to give a quick rundown of the amateur radio license classes in the United States. Uh, of course this is specific to the United States. Uh, if you're in a different country than the United States, uh, you can find that information uh, through Google uh, or search engine of your choice, uh, usually by looking for the amateur radio uh, organization in your country or your country's uh, radio spectrum uh, regulatory body. So, in the United States, there are currently three license classes that you can uh, test for and uh, receive a license. There is the technician class license, which is entry level, and that gives you access to small amounts of the HF spectrum, uh, usually CW on uh, most of the bands, and uh, voice on 10 meter uh, in a small segment, and then uh, 6 meter, which is 50 megahertz up, uh, you have uh, full access to those bands. The next license class up is the general class license. Oh, sorry, on the technician class license, it's a 35 question test to pass that. On the general class license, uh, which is also a 35 question test, uh, you have to pass a technician before you can try for general. Uh, that class of license gives you uh, kind of a general level of access to the HF bands and all of the privileges that are included in the technician class license. Uh, it's approximately 83% of HF uh, bandwidth that you get. So the next class of license after that is the Amateur Extra. And in the Amateur Extra, uh, that gives you access to uh, certain sections of the bands, of the amateur radio bands in HF, in addition to what you get in general and technician class. Uh, so each of these add together. And you have to have passed technician and general before you can take the extra class exam. The Amateur Extra class uh, exam is 50 questions. And... Uh, all of these exams are multiple choice. The question pools are published, although I would recommend that uh, if you're interested in getting your amateur radio license that you uh, actually study the material instead of just trying to uh, memorize the questions and the answers. Uh, you'll be in a lot better position once you have your license and you're ready to start operating on the radio. If you've actually studied the material, you'll have a better understanding and uh, you'll have a better knowledge of the, uh, the regulatory information such as band limits. So you'll make sure that you're always uh, operating in segments of the bands where you're authorized to operate. Uh, in the United States, the uh, licensing is not handled uh, through the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. It's actually handled through the VE system. Uh, the, uh, and the way that that's handled is that there are VE... Let's see here. There are VECs uh, throughout the country they're all associated and so you may be able to take your test through uh, the AARL VEC through the uh, W5YI VEC through Laurel VEC there are other VEC organizations out there uh, each of those have uh, volunteer volu uh, let's see I was gonna say volunteer VEs they're actually volunteer examiners that uh, live and work in the area where you're going to be taking your test and uh, they give the exams, forward the results back to their organization, and that gets sent to the FCC so that the FCC can issue you a call sign and uh, add you to their database, the uh, ULS. And so once you're licensed, uh, depending on what you're allowed to do, you can get started. My recommendation is, if you're looking at getting into amateur radio, that you uh, go ahead and study and uh, prepare yourself for the technician class exam uh, and either immediately after or concurrently uh, also prepare for the general class exam. Uh, the technician class exam will give you access to uh, local simplex and uh, repeaters. There are repeaters out there that are connected across the world but uh, it's a lot of the excitement in amateur radio for most people is in HF and to get to HF, you have to have passed the technician and the general class uh, exams. Uh, that's really where you're going to start to get a lot of fun at, is in once you get onto HF. For resources, I'll put some links to resources down below. Uh, what I can recommend is uh, get a license manual, uh, perhaps from the ARRL, and then study that. Uh, you can access practice tests through uh, 
hem test online or through qrc.com. And uh, once you've studied the material, you can take some practice tests. Uh, once you're to the point where you're consistently scoring into the 90s, I would say you're prepared for the exam. You can go ahead and go uh, to testing site and uh, take the exam. Most of the VECs out there uh, will allow you to take multiple exams. So say for instance you go to the testing session and uh, you pass the technician class exam. Uh, most VECs will let you go ahead and take the general class exam uh, and or the uh, amateur extra class exam. Uh, under the one testing fee that you paid. Of course, if you fail any exam, uh, they may make you wait until the next testing session, or they may let you test again uh, if you pay another testing fee. It depends on the rules and regulations that that particular VEC has. Cost-wise, uh, it varies. Uh, just to take the exam, you're looking at uh, anywhere from free. Uh, for instance, if you go to a Laurel uh, VEC testing session, uh, or uh, it could be any other set fee that that organization has decided on. Uh, most of the time it's uh, less than around $15 or so. The license is good for 10 years. At the end of the 10 years you can either pay an organization to help you renew or you can go to the FCC ULS cores system and uh, you can do your own renewal for free. Uh, the system can be a little complicated so a lot of people do like to pay to have it renewed. Uh, as towards other license classes that you may run into, there are still operators out there in the novice class and the advanced class. And um, those classes you can't currently test to get into them, but there are operators that have stayed in those classes. Uh, the numbers decrease over time. Uh, a lot of the operators, uh, you know, they may still be in those classes because either they're inactive or because uh, they like being in a class that, uh, that you can't get into anymore. Uh, the advanced class is the uh, remaining class that required you to take the code test, the Morse code test. Uh, the code portion is no longer required. Uh, it used to be required by international treaty. That was removed uh, around 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Uh, a lot of operators still like to use Morse code. There are resources out there to help you learn Morse code. Uh, learn CW online. Uh, for Android phones, there's an app called Morse Mentor that I use, and uh, I'm working on le learning to code myself at this point, and uh, I intend to, uh, to use it on the air. Uh, as part of the uh, QRP radios that I'm buying, uh, I have a UBITX on the way, and uh, while it does do single sideband, uh, the power is, uh, the output is rather low, and so I'm learning Morse code, so I'll be able to, uh, to operate that way. Uh, Morse code, uh, CW, continuous wave, is able to get through uh, when voice won't. Voice tends to require more power uh, to get through because the power that's being output uh, outputted by your radio is spread across more spectrum than when you're using a, uh, a CW signal. And so uh, when you operate QRP, a lot of people who are operating QRP uh, are using uh, Morse code on CW. So that's going to be it for today. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I hope that you found this video informative, and I also hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.